Hi, this is Mashnu, and I would like to show you one of my own games again. Um, I played this game yesterday, yesterday evening, at the chess club, and um, it's a nice game. I find it's um, it, it shows actually the flexibility of the pair defense, and that's what I um, what I like a lot about this this defense. It's uh, it's not an easy defense to play because in many variations you get in the beginning. Um, you have a lack of space with, with black and you need to find a way to counter and if you don't do that then white simply advances and, and crushes you so it's, it's really important to try to find a way to, uh, to get some counterplay with black in this, uh, in this defense so well my opponent opened with e4 and I played the Pyrrhic d6 um, lately I've been playing the Aliakin defense a lot uh, the knight of six, but this time I wanted to change to uh, my old weapon, the Pyrrhic. Now d4, knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4, knight c3, defending it, and now g6. And here white has several options f4, the Austrian attack, knight f3 is an option, f3 is also a very sharp variation, f3 uh, followed by g4 or h4. But my opponent chose of the so called classical system, knight f3. Bishop g7, and here there are several options. The um, the most common move is uh, what my opponent did, Bishop to e2. But some people play here h3 to prevent Bishop to g4. But in, in this game, Bishop e2 was played, and I castled, and he castled as well, as well. And now we have this position where actually um, Black has two well let's say three main options one of them is c6 that's what I played the other one is knight c6 and the other one is bishop to g4 that is uh, advised in the the book Pyrrhic Alert by Grandmasters Lev Albert and Alexander Chernin by the way a very good book if you want to uh, study the Pyrrhic defense it's, uh, it's a very good book where they explain you really in a very nice way the, uh, the the main ideas of the period defense without getting lost into much uh, theory but well anyway uh, the idea by the way of, of bishop to g4 is that if white plays h3 black is happy to, to trade this light square bishop for the knight on a 3 and the reason for this is that black wants to play against these two points d4 and e5 so by trading this knight on f3 white has less less uh, influence against this so here e5 is the most let's say easy way to um, to achieve uh, equal game then takes takes bishop g5 c6 to prevent the knight from entering on, on d5 and then after trade of queens there is uh, equality here knight a6 is the last developing move this is the, um, the easiest way for black to achieve an equal position but at the same time it's uh, well, a bit of a boring position since the, uh, the uh, pawn structure is so uh, symmetric so let me return to where we left because what I did was to play c6 now my opponent played h3 the other logical option here is to play a4 for white the idea of c6 is to prepare b7 b5 so with a4 white prevents this b7 b5 move so then how black should continue is to play a5 to prevent him from advancing one more time to a5 and then it can continue with h h3 knight a6 and this knight later goes to b4 so that's that's the way of, of playing this if white plays uh, a4 but in the game h3 was played so it allowed me to play b5 and now again white has two main options of course black is um, threatening b4 attacking the knight if the knight moves then e4 hangs so black should prevent b4 this can be done by the move a3 
that's um, a theoretical line and the other way to play this is let's say the more aggressive way and that's what happened in the game is that white plays e5 so moving this pawn that could become vulnerable and attacking immediately the knight on f6 here there are two main options to take on e5 is one and the other one is to play knight e8 I chose to take d takes e5 and my opponent retook with the knight now I played knight f to d7 threatening to take on e5 and win a pawn there so white played bishop to f4 defending e5 one more time and now I went with my queen to b6 queen b6 my idea was to empty the space d8 for a rook to play a rook to d8 and have it on this line here and also the queen on b6 is targeting d4 here my opponent played um, a4 looks like a quite strong move threatening a5 and threatening also to take on b5 and winning a pawn so I had to choose to either play b4 right now or trade first on uh, on e5 b4 would have been possible I didn't do it I, I took actually on e5 but it was possible to play b4 and then this knight will probably go to e4 or he will play perhaps first a5 attacking my queen and after my queen moves let's say for example b7 I, I don't want to go to c7 because of this bishop there so queen b7 probably and then knight to e4 it's an option um, in the game I chose to take immediately on e5 knight takes e5 and here my opponent retook with the d-pawn and after the game we were analyzing and we thought that it was probably better to take with the bishop um, then black actually needs to take on e5 I mean f6 is not really an option so bishop takes e5, d takes e5 and then b4 knight to e4 and then bishop to f5 this is probably more or less an equal position the white can um, can play knight to g3 now and then the bishop must return to e6 and that's well that's quite a good square for the bishop and then uh, after this uh, black can continue developing with knight to d7 knight to c5 and then a rook to d8 so that's that's all right but in the game d takes e5 happened so i played b4 now knight to e4 rook d8 attacking the queen and the queen went to e1 there were of course different options to go to uh, to c1 or to, to e1 b1 looks a bit strange but perhaps it's an option uh, c1 looks looks quite natural in the sense that if you go queen to c1 you have the the queen on the same diagonal as the bishop so bishop to h6 becomes perhaps an idea but queen to e1 the idea is that this queen is targeting b4 and also supporting this pawn after these two light pieces the bishop and the knight move away from there then perhaps white can see if he can play e6 so this is the general idea I think behind queen to e1 well I, I continued developing bishop to f5 and here my opponent made a slight mistake I think he played bishop to f3 and it looks like a very logical place for the bishop placing the bishop here targeting this uh, this pawn on c6 and the rook is there behind but the thing is that with bishop to f3 black is allowed to develop his knight to d7 winning a temple so here knight to d7 attacking the pawn on e5 this is by the way the um, the counter side of this aggressive move e4 e5 that was played in the opening this pawn can become weak now instead of, of bishop to f3 probably bishop e3 was better so the other bishop attacking my queen and then my queen must go to c7 for example now e5 is attacked and here knight to g3 
looks interesting and, and now if the queen takes on e5 white can take on b4 and uh, another idea is to take on c2 with the bishop so bishop takes c2 here then queen takes b4 again and queen takes e5 or bishop takes e5 actually bishop takes e5 then we are threatening to take on g3 now queen to c4 is a strong move attacking the bishop on c2 and this bishop doesn't have much good squares to go it's actually only a 5 so we are forced to play bishop to a 5 here and then knight takes a 5 g takes a 5 and well we can say that white has compensation for the uh, for the pawn in, in, in the sense that there is a weakness on c6 black has a double pawn here his king is a bit uh, in open air and white has the two bishops so this is probably good playable for, for white but in the game bishop to f3 was played here instead of bishop e3 bishop f3 I went to d7 with my knight attacking e4 and now another mistake happened uh, knight to g5 the idea of my opponent was that I could take on c2 but that would be a mistake here um, if bishop takes c2 then knight takes f7 can be played or perhaps even stronger e6 it's um, it becomes quite complicated here quite tactical the idea of knight takes f7 is that if king takes f7 then e6 check king f8 and then take on d7 take on d7 and uh, well here perhaps rook to c1 is an uh, is an idea mm, let's see do I take on a4 then yeah oh, wait a minute so perhaps queen to c1 is needed and then b3 you see again we see that that's this our vulnerabilities in, in, in the black uh, side on the other hand black has a pawn more we both have two bishops and this bishop is well well placed there controlling this d1 square that is the the only really open file so that was the idea of uh, knight to g5 but what what um, why didn't consider is the move that I played is uh, simply h6 h6 attacking the knight on g5 and the knight doesn't have any good square actually I mean going back to uh, to e4 then I simply win the pawn on e5 so what he did is he played a5 and that's that's doesn't achieve anything actually because this queen on b6 was going to d4 anyway so with a5 actually white is helping black actually this this a5 loses simply a tempo so i played queen to d4 here and now black is standing much much better the, the bishop on f4 is attacked the knight on g5 is attacked the only way to prevent losing a piece was here to play knight to e4 but well then e5 falls in the game um, let me show you just if knight to e4 then knight takes e5 bishop takes e5 queen takes e5 and, and black is fine uh, a piece up two bishops and two weaknesses here on b2 and c2 so I think this is uh, this is better for black well he can play c6 c3 to prevent those uh, those weak, weak um, pawns to a uh, to be attacked um, and then if I take the knight takes well still black is a pawn up um, instead of that he played e6 trying to complicate things but this is something that well can simply be calculated I can simply take on f4 and win a piece he took on f takes on f7 king goes to f8 knight h7 check king takes f7 
it took down c6, I went with my rook to c8, and here my opponent resigned. You see, this this knight on h6 is uh, is going to be lost as well. It, it doesn't have any place to escape. So this is um, this was the game, and and what I find interesting here is that um, well, actually, White tried to attack um, and to um, to go for a very sharp line but uh, against the period defense white must be really careful in the sense that once black um, can disentangle and and uh, and develop his pieces then white can uh, black can get quite good uh, counterplay so all right this is the game that I won I, I won yesterday and uh, I hope you found it interesting and uh, I'll see you next time on YouTube. Goodbye.